Uh, yes, my name is Andreas Kranz, and I'm a graphical designer and a design engineer. My formal education is at Chalmers in uh, Göteborg as a design engineer. So I have a, probably a little different approach to graphical design than most other designers. I come more from a yeah, mechanical and engineering point of view. And what I'm going to talk about today is first is a little bit about grouping and hierarchy. Uh, and then something that I like to call connecting graphics with reality. And then my three golden design rules that I've made up myself. And uh, let's get started. Grouping and hierarchy. Uh, when I started working here uh, as a graphical designer about seven years ago, uh, I was told by a lot of people that uh, a measure of good interaction is to have as few clicks as possible. Uh, I think this comes from a time when you didn't have fast computers in your devices and probably just arrow keys to navigate between screens. But using this methodology, you, you get something like this. You get everything directly when you start a program. This, uh, if, you are, if you're new to a program, you get a little bit scared when you see this. It's pretty intimidating. Uh, this can be good if you're a very experienced user and you know exactly what you want to do, you want to do it quickly. But to a beginner or a novice user, this doesn't really, it, it scares people off. Uh, so, I believe that good in interaction comes from logically grouping objects together to make it easier for everyone to understand where things are going and to navigate. Uh, even if you don't know where you're going, you can navigate by, uh, by your own head. This is another example of a, where they use grouping in a, in a good way, I think. This is an uh, Android tablet setting screen. When you come into this, it looks much more clean than the, the other program. And uh, you, you, don't, you don't really know where you're, at the first time you don't really know what you're, where, where you're going to go, but you can, if you want to change something to applications, you know, you can find that and then you can scroll through and yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to find. Uh, and when it comes to hierarchy, uh, when I talk about that, I mean, um, uh, how you visually uh, group objects together and how you, uh, what you see first. For instance here, all of you will have read this, this first part here. Uh, and when it comes to these three, it's, everyone sees this the same way. This is very important, less important, and less important still. Uh, this is important when you, when you design a user interface to, to be aware of this, I think. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, hierarchies to, that you can use and you need to be aware about. Uh, one that's very obvious is size. The bigger something is, the more uh, important you will, uh, you will find it. Color. Uh, for instance, you can group stuff with color. Then if something else has another color, it sticks out to you. Uh, also, red, orange, and yellow is, is your eyes look at that straight away because that's, we are programmed some way to see that that is, that is something important. Uh, green and blue is, yeah, it's not so important. Uh, contrast, the higher contrast something has, the more important it is or the, most, the more you will focus on that. Alignment. If something is out of alignment, you will see that as more important. Uh, and uh, proximity. We, if you have something important over here and less important over there, it's the closer it is to the important stuff, the more more focus you will get. Uh, one way to see this also is that uh, on a page, the most important stuff is always at the top, and you start looking at the top and going down. And uh, my favorite, levels, where you can design stuff in different 
areas and that you group stuff together in, in, different, um, uh, in different levels. This is an example of a pretty, pretty subtle way of using this. This is a group over here where you can choose location, overview, live view. And when you have se selected this, you have this one here where you have selected Delaware and Arkansas. It's very subtle changes, but you, you immediately see that this, these are selected. They have a small color change here to indicate this. And also Arkansas here is selected because they have a, uh, a different color on the background here. So this is pretty, pretty subtle, but quite apparent, I think. Uh, this is another example where they have used more of a 3D touch to it. Uh, you see that the, the gray ones are a bit pushed out. I think you can see it. Yeah. Uh, this selected object has a nice blue color here. And the sub-objects sub are pushed into the, the background here and are uh, less, a uh, little bit smaller text. Here you have a nice, nice example. Uh, this is, you probably all recognize this from Windows 3.11. Uh, very, very, uh, very good use of hierarchy, I think, because it's very apparent what you can interact with. Uh, all uh, the scroll viewer, all the text objects, they are, are sunken into the, to the screen and they are white. It is very, uh, apparent that it is Excel that you have selected. All buttons are raised out of the out of the pop-up menu here. So it's very it's very apparent what what you can interact with. And this is more something that that is very modern today. A very flat, uh, very sleek, and very stylish design. You have some uh, toggle buttons over there. Some type tab control over there. This is very nice, but you need to be aware that when you uh, when you use this type of design, you lose a lot of the hierarchy possibilities that you have with the previous examples I showed you. For instance, you, we don't work with levels at all, and no shading or something like that. So, I believe that this, I think this is a progress bar. It looks something like a progress bar. These two, I think they are sliders. But it's, uh, it's very nice, but you need to be aware that if you design something like this, it can be hard for your, the person who uses it to, to see what it is you, are, you, you want them to do. Uh, so in conclusion of this, uh, use mind maps. I didn't talk uh, so much about that, but uh, when I start a project, I always like to, to use a mind map to, to get a sense of the balance of uh, uh, of a system, how I should group stuff and where I should place them. It's also very good to use when you talk to your client or to explain to someone else how you think your, uh, your system should work. And uh, if you have a novice users, uh, uh, use more groups, more logical, like the Android settings tablet uh, screen I showed you. But if you have very experienced users who know exactly how to use the system, uh, then they will want uh, more to be able to do something very fast. And lastly, you should be aware of hierarchy when choosing design. Uh, so this can be an issue like the, uh, like the screen I showed you before. It's important to, to be aware of that. So, connecting graphics with reality. Uh, this is a Google image search I did for uh, save icon. Uh, as you can see, almost everything is the, the, the old floppy disk symbol we still use. Uh, down here, someone has tried to make uh, the new save icon. I have never seen that before. And this is, I don't know, upload to cloud or something. Uh, we, this is so... Uh, this symbol, I think we're going to have stick with this a long time because it's so, yeah, we're so used to it. Even though no one's used to, used to flop with this, 
disk for uh, during this millennia. Um, here is another example of how, how, how this is the opposite way. Uh, this is something called a PNID diagram. It shows uh, a gas plant water treatment piping and instrument instrumentation diagram. Uh, I don't know if you if you're used to this, but this is this is a valve. No, this is a tank. Uh, these are some valves. This is, here's a pump or something like that. It's very hard to to read this if you don't if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, well, this is how you, this is the old way to view your, your plant, for instance. Uh, the next phase of this was to use something like this, a very strange looking uh, way to, to, to control your, your plant. Same here, here you have some uh, tanks and a pump. And I think this works that you, you come here and you see uh, this tank, I need to I need to fill this tank over here. And then I read all the text on the buttons here, and some buttons there, and you work on it that way. And then if you do something wrong, these ones will start blinking, and it says no touching over there. I think it's great. <laughs> uh, here, you don't really get a connection with what it is you are working with in this example. Uh, And this is probably the next step when you di digitalized a system like this, where you have everything, everything in your face. It's um, very hard to, to, to see anything here, I think. Uh, we, we have a little different approach. And um, uh, we, one of our biggest clients is Alfa Laval, which probably most of you know. Uh, they make pretty high-tech equipment like a separator. This is a decanter and uh, this is some valves. We, uh, most of these equipment are controlled by touchscreen panels now, instead of the systems you saw earlier. And we, one of the things that we help them with this uh, is to, to get a better connection with what it, is, what it is that you are working on, not just have a, a button that you don't really know what, what, what happens if I push this. And uh, this is something that you can see in, uh, uh, in one of Alfa Laval's uh, systems. Here you have, uh, this is actually, this is nothing. I just put together a few, a few pipes and valves because they don't really appreciate that we show exactly how it is that their system is working. But something like this will work that we, when the, an operator is using the system, you can push on, on all of the different components and you, you get a menu with all the stuff that you can do with it. Uh, for instance, this is a mixing valve. And if you push this one, you get something like this. This menu here, we get a little bit uh, bigger image of the, uh, the valve. It's, it looks pretty complicated, but it, it, is, it, it does, basically it does four things. It's, in this case, it's closed and you have fluid running up here and here, but it's separated. It can be open, and then you mix the two fluids together. Or you can uh, do something called an upper seat lift. It sounds complicated, but all it does is that it, it drains fluid from the top part, and you have a lower seat push, which means it drains fluid from the bottom part. And uh, uh, a lot of the operators have a problem understanding what, what these things mean. So we try to get a visual First, you, you push on the actual object you want to work with, and you get a visual feedback of exactly what it is that you are doing. So you, you can see directly what happens, and then you can change it if you want to. Uh, another client that we're working with is a company called K-Lab. Uh, they make very high-tech chairs. Uh, these are used in, uh, in uh, uh, cranes for uh, loading and offloading big cargo ships, for instance. Uh, these chairs can, can tilt back, so you're basically lying down and working, or they can tilt forward, and then you have a, like a ride on, a, on Lisa Berg. <laughs> you, you strap yourself in, and then you can hang in front like that and operate it. 
uh, on their old versions they have um, buttons to uh, physical buttons to control to raise right armrest for instance and the left arm and tilt it forward and they wanted to go to a touchscreen panel instead and be able to save your settings so that when you came to your chair the chair would remember who you were and you have your settings that you can load and uh, uh, they solve this by they have touch screen panel and a magnetic tag that on the, mag the magnetic tag remembers who you are so when you come up to the, your machine you place your magnet magnetic tag on it and you are automatically logged in with your presets and uh, when they started designing their user interface, they went with a, a nine inch touchscreen panel. Uh, and they just fitted all the different buttons that you could use. You can tilt your, uh, what do you call it, armrest. But uh, then they had more complicated chairs that could swing you back and forth and rotate around. So they ran out of space for, to put buttons. So their, their plan was to go up to a 12-inch screen instead. <laughs> and that would cost them, uh, I think, three or 4,000 kroners more per chair just to get the extra screen size. Uh, so we made it another design for them uh, that it looks like this. We have uh, removed all buttons except for the, your five programs that you can save. And when you come to the machine and you put your magnetic tag on it, you automatically get into uh, preset number one, because that's the one you use most often. And then uh, when, you're, when you want to interact with something, you, can, you press on the uh, armrest, for instance, or the leg, the stand, or you can press on the seat, and you can move it up, and you can press on the, uh, what do you call it, backrest. You can tilt it down. So if I, for instance, press on the right arm rest here, you, you get zoomed into the uh, a little bit, and you get all the all the options you have for this. You can raise it and lower it forward and backward and tilt it. Uh, so here, I think this is good because you, you see exactly what it is you're working with. And an added bonus is that uh, you don't need to worry about uh, uh, languages because we, we don't have any text at all. And uh, this is the, how it looks in, in reality. I have a little problem because it, they changed the design of the chair, so it doesn't look the same as this, unfortunately. But we're gonna fix that for them. Works, yeah. <laughs> and also they, they sometimes, uh, they mount it on the right side and sometimes on the left side. So that's a, 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 another little issue because you get confused with what, am I looking in a mirror when I look at the screen or is it, am I sitting else beside it? But we're working on that. Uh, and uh, what's, what's the next phase of this? Uh, the next phase could probably be that you have like Google glasses or something when you're sitting on this chair and you can, uh, you can just look down at your armrest and you get a button that raise it or something like that. Uh, another of our, uh, a colleague of ours, he's working a lot with uh, augmented reality, but for uh, iPad applications that you can, uh, for, we have one project we did for Alpha Laval that you can, you can take your iPad and hold it up against one of their machines and you get, uh, you can see exactly how it looks inside for, mainly used for showing off at uh, conferences and stuff like that, but it's pretty cool. Uh, so, I think it's important to use uh, logical connections with reality. So you know, it's easier that way, like with the save icon, it's, it's, it sticks in your head, you know, you know what it is. Uh, and link interaction point to the affected object that uh, you, if you if you're using the like the um, the chair, you press on the thing you want to uh, 
you want to affect. It's, it's, it's where people go to look. Uh, use visual feedback, I think also is very important. To, so you see what, what happens when, you're, when you affect something. Uh, and lastly, I have three golden design rules. Uh, my first one is less is more. Uh, at least I when, I, when I design something, I, oh, if I don't have any good ideas, I just, ah, it's some more color here, or drop shadow here, or maybe some cool reflections over here. And it's, it's, it's always good to take a step back and look at it as what, what, what you have done and probably edit a little bit, remove a lot of stuff. Uh, second one, alignment is king. Make sure that nothing's, uh, everything is in line. If you have something, as we talked about earlier, if something sticks out a little bit, that gets more focus. You want, if that's not what you intended, it can be a bit, a bit annoying. And lastly, consistency is also king. Uh, if, if you have a pop-up menu, for instance, you want them to look exactly the same, all different, the button should be in exactly the same position. Uh, and everything should react the same way. It's easy to, uh, to forget about this or to uh, make something, uh, this button could, could react that way. But you should always, it should always be consistent because otherwise you, your user could get a little bit frightened and don't know what, what happens when they push something. Uh, and that's it, thank you. Do you have any questions?